This podcast is sponsored by Talkspace. You know when you're really stressed or not feeling so great about your life or about yourself? Talking to someone who understands can really help. But who is that person? How do you find them? Where do you even start? Talkspace. Talkspace makes it easy to get the support you need. With Talkspace, you can go online, answer a few questions about your preferences, and be matched with a therapist. And because you'll meet your therapist online, you don't have to take time off work or arrange childcare. You'll meet on your schedule, wherever you feel most at ease. If you're depressed, stressed, struggling with a relationship, or if you want some counseling for you and your partner, or just need a little extra one-on-one -on -one support, Talkspace is here for you. Plus, Talkspace works with most major insurers, and most insured members have a $0 copay. No insurance? No problem. Now get $80 off of your first month with promo code SPACE80 when you go to Talkspace.com. Match with a licensed therapist today at Talkspace.com. Save $80 with code SPACE80 at Talkspace.com. The Paranorm Girl Podcast presents Spectral Shorts, Volume 3. As the sun sets and the heat of day gives way to the stillness of a hot summer night, things previously unseen begin to stir. As shadows lengthen and the familiar becomes unknown, you may begin to wonder just what all could be lurking beyond the safety of the light. Welcome back to the program. Time to settle into your favorite spot and let the warm summer breeze carry you into the heart of the following chilling tales. Our first account comes to us by way of Alex from Hereford, Arizona. My name is Alex Hamilton. I'm from, well, a variety of places, but I currently live in Hereford, Arizona. Um, my story, uh, it's, so me and my friends, uh, one night we went out skinwalker hunting, which not the safest thing to do, not the smartest thing to do. Um, and so we get there, it's dark out, and my friend, we, while he's getting out of the car, he stumbles on a rock, almost trips over himself, and says, blurts out, damn it, um, as, as you would. But then... As we're going, we're about an hour, hour and a half in. Um, from behind me, I hear someone say, damn it. Problem is, the friend who said that thing, hold on, Ugh. my memory's getting it fl flustered up, sorry. So I hear my friend who said damn it before, I hear him say, damn it, from behind me. Problem is, he's the one walking in front of me. So we don't see nothing after that, we don't hear nothing after that, but we just decide, hey, good enough time to call it quits and we just head back to the car and go home so i mean was the reaction mutual with you two like is it, did you both hear the damn well there was the three of us uh there were three of us out there uh and yeah we we heard it all three of us heard it and we're like what was that because we thought maybe one of my friends had tried to imitate it but that was too good to be imitated and yeah. friends said no so do you think it was a, a skinwalker i don't know because, I mean, the, we, the purpose of us being out there was to catch a skinwalker, right? Um, but, like, we didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. But hearing nothing, not hearing anything is in and of itself a sign, so. Yeah. Well, last question for you. Um, what, what would you do if you got one? Hmm. Is there a That's, plan in place? Well, <laughs> um, see, we, had, we, we did have guns with us, so. That was uh, that was a thing, but if we if we did see anything, we probably wouldn't have shot it at all. Because if we could identify, hey, that's a skinwalker, I tell you, I, w I probably would have left. I probably would have been like, nope, I'm getting out of here. 
And that would probably be for the best, Alex. Thank you so much for your story. According to a quick Google search, the Skinwalker is indeed capable of mimicry, and it's one of the more terrifying aspects of the Navajo legend. This is a power used to trick and deceive people, making them believe they are hearing someone they know or trust. I can imagine the fear that would set in if my friend called out from behind me, while clearly walking in front of me. Our second and final experiences come from Lisa of Vail, Arizona. My name is Lisa Purcell and I'm from Vail, Arizona. So today we're in Tombstone and um, we've been to the Birdcage Theater a few different times. Um, we've caught some things including the cowboy and the reflection of um, the hearse that's in there. And so then um, when I came home I kept smelling what would smell like a cowboy, like what I would assume would smell like those days. Um, my husband was out of town and um, it felt like he had walked up behind me and I turned to talk to him and realized, oh, he's out of town. And so um, I would acknowledge and talk to the cowboy. So I always felt like a, a safe, comfortable, protective kind of feeling. Um, and we take out, um, because we, we're novices, so we like to take out our equipment and um, took out the uh, EMF detector and it would just light up to red in a certain corner where I felt that he was at. And so, um, yeah, that was pretty nice. He has since come back here, which I completely understand. And um, whenever we go to the birdcage, it's just kind of feeling that presence. Um, another experience was at the Stanley Hotel. Um, was very fortunate to capture a few different things including faces in the reflection of the mirror of a room nobody was in um, as well as um, downstairs um, there is a girl that's down there our entire um, ghost hunting group had gone upstairs we were on a tour everybody was upstairs there's three stories and while everybody was upstairs um, I didn't feel quite well so I went to get some water downstairs um, that's very out of character for me um, even though I like the paranormal it still is a little bit um, unnerving at times and so I would normally take my husband but I just didn't feel well my focus was on the water so I went down there by myself um, after I took the water and took an Advil I realized oh I'm in the basement by myself with, I believe if I'm not mistaken, her name is Lily, and I apologize if that's incorrect, but it's a few years ago at this point, but they had talked about a girl that unfortunately um, had frozen and passed away there. And so as I turn, I realize I'm in this area by myself, going back upstairs to join the tour group, and I felt her. She was right behind me. There was no mistaking. I'm like, I am absolutely not alone. Much like the cowboy, I'm like, I feel that presence. And I turn around, and I acknowledge her, and I just felt her with us. We went upstairs, and my sister-in-law had um, the dowsing rods, and the, um, the tour guide was asking, were you downstairs You know, with this person and that kind of stuff? And we just kept getting hit after hit and responses and saying, yes yes I was with her yes I was right behind her and so um, that was a really cool experience and then we've also gone to the Queen Mary one of my absolute favorite locations being a California girl born, born and raised for over 30 years been there multiple times multiple experiences um, probably the last time that I went I got um, crystal clear EVPs. I got every time that we walked past the lights on the bridge, um, or I'm sorry, out on the deck, they would um, flicker. And as soon as we passed, they stopped, walked back by, they'd flicker. So just kind of acknowledging. And again, um, I know that spirits um, are, human spirits are just people without bodies. I know there are other types of spirits as well, those I don't interact with. But the, the human spirits, um, definitely open to that and so when I acknowledge and I'm respectful to them I get that in response and so again EVPs um, I got one of the most exciting captures I've ever had was I was standing by myself again with a tour. I like to go off by myself on tours, getting more comfortable with it. Again, not at that time at the Stanley, but other times just kind of being like, okay, like I'm okay, I can do this. And so kind of wandered off. I could see our entire uh, group. They were down below. It was a two-story situation in the engine room. So I'm up looking at the engine from above and our whole group is down from below looking at it. And so I'm taking pictures and the protocol is to take burst pictures where if you're trying to capture, you have to take, I'm uh, overachiever. So I take a minimum of six. I know that it's the you know rule of thumb is three, but I always take six. And in five, there's absolutely nothing. 
And then in the sixth one, there is a gentleman's hand on the railing, and it looks like an actual human hand, and I'm up there by myself. And unfortunately, there's a gentleman that was killed up there who was um, trying to jump through um, the, um, the doors as they were closing, and he was crushed in the door, and I asked more questions. And in there, you can not only see his hand, but what looks like the cuff of like overalls of like a worker that would be down there. And so I was just, and again, these are humans without their bodies. So I was talking to him. I was acknowledging his situation. I'm saying, I'm sorry that this was your experience and that you've passed. We're here respectfully to engage and communicate and hear your story and just, you know, relate human to human. And so... I feel that when you go in with a respectful presence that you're met respectfully. And so I think he was just like, okay, you're here to let me go ahead and show myself. And so, again, by far and away, one of my most exciting captures. And I'm just, I'm very fortunate. Anywhere I go, being open to that and being like, again, I'm here respectfully. Let's have an interaction. I feel I feel very fortunate that that's been my experience. So, yeah. You approach the paranormal. Yeah. I wish we had more time. I yeah. we got to go. <laughs> so sorry. So yeah. Like Stanley, wait, yeah. Yeah. Can we marry? Well, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and if you, I know, I, again, I love it. I've been going since I was a child so many times. And if I can find, I'm sorry, I know it's a little bit dark out here. Or I mean, light out here from my phone, it's a, a bit dark. And unfortunately, everything I've archived on my phone, so I have to go through my Instagram when it's not being, when it's not being difficult and a pain. Let me see if I can slide down there really quick. So again, here are, here, and again, sorry, it's a bit dark. So you can see in the burst photos where there's nothing except for the one where his actual hand. And again, you can see a little bit of the cuff of the... Got to be choking. Yeah, oh and gosh. then here is another one. So this is just being up on the deck outside. This is the placard that shows all the people who have passed there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just lights up red any time that I've gone in there. And again, I've gone multiple times. This just happens to be one picture. But I was out on the deck outside, and I always double tap my phone to make sure I'm getting a crystal clear photo. And I snapped and I got this. Again, burst. I didn't include them because of everything yeah. I included here. Yeah. But it just all of a sudden you can see. And you can see the two figures. These people were not there. No, they were not. It was an empty deck. I was up there at night by myself. So, wow. yeah. Again, wow. I've gotten more comfortable with it. Yeah. Certainly not in a dark basement by myself. But if I'm out in the open in an area like this, I know that somebody could turn a corner and that kind of thing. So I'm a little more comfortable. But in this, just out there by myself and then this one it's really hard to see outside this is in my opinion this face again I know it's very hard to see but I was like who is this this is in the ballroom where they have you know Queen Mary herself and if you look this at a, in the mirror, a mirror no this is just just standing there just taking a picture of the ballroom I just zoomed in and cropped it but I know it's okay, see, very it's hard, hard to see, see that one, but, but if I, you I, I look up a picture of actual Queen Mary that the ship is named after, uh -huh. you see a picture that looks exactly like this. And she's known to be like the white woman in the ballroom. I'm like, mm -hmm. I think that's Queen Mary because this is what I picked up and what you I think. So I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, on a personal note, um, my grandma who... Um, one of my most favorite human beings to ever walk the earth. Um, the day after she passed, I actually have a video of that. Um, and actually, I'll just save it and you tell me what you see. And that's her chair that it came out of. So um, I feel like that was just... And that's she, pretty distinct, right, too. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of people have ordered right. things that and are just like, oh, she no. was never one to... <laughs> her and my sister and my, my father are non-believers, and that's perfectly fine. Not everybody and that kind of stuff. But I told her, you come back and you haunt me. Like, it's fine. I believe <laughs> even if you don't, whatever. <laughs> and then the next day I got that, so I was like, okay, we're good. And then she's all the time. I get at things, and I mean things that are distinct, that are distinctly her all the time. So, again, it's just having that contact with the humans who no longer have their bodies and again there are other entities in that I do not mess with that I've come across those not my jam shut that down protect yourself <laughs> but with with other humans absolutely when I used to live in Southern California I was lucky enough to visit and take a tour of the Queen Mary my own experiences were pretty unnerving but nothing that would beat the picture you showed me of the hand on the railing I sure hope you have shared that capture on social, Lisa. And as for your other captures and experiences, you are indeed one of those special individuals of the population where it isn't hard to believe in the paranormal. Because the paranormal, quite literally, is your normal. That will wrap today's installment of Spectral Shorts. 
Thank you for tuning in. And if you are new to the show and ghosts are your thing, the Paranorm Girl podcast is gearing up to launch Season 7, premiering on September 3rd. And the topic for the course of this season is ghosts and hauntings. It already has promised to be one of my spookier topics in some time. And I can certainly get down with some spookiness anytime. If you enjoyed the show today, please tell me by leaving a high rating and review, including all of the reasons you found it so enjoyable. The ratings help the show reach new ears, and the reviews help me make necessary and desired adjustments, withdrawals, or additions to the show. The next season may be on the horizon, but we will still have one more installment of Spectral Shorts to look forward to in just two weeks. And both tales are ones to really look forward to, I promise you. In the meantime, please find and message me on social at ParanormGirlPod. Send a message to ParanormGirlPod at gmail.com. You can also connect with me and support the show all in one by becoming a patron, and in so doing, enjoy perks like early access, no ads, merch, shoutouts, private movie nights or online meetups with me, announcements, updates, the works. Visit patreon.com forward slash paranormgirlpod for more info or to try a free trial membership before joining. You can also easily reach me via my other show, Beer, Booze, and Boogeyman. And by reach me, I invite you to call me. During our monthly stream for an hour and a half, my number is yours, my friends. Please check out our next episode, streaming September 7th. Our Kickstarter campaign is still chugging right along. A Night at the Night House is sure to be an event to remember, and one you will want to take part in. Please check out the link in the show notes to learn more about perks such as bonus content and RPG access and control during our live-streamed investigation. Thank you so much for your listenership and continued support while the show is dark. Stay tuned in two weeks for Volume 4 of our summer series. Until then, stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open.